important to calculus. So if we're going to start discussing the calculus, it's probably good to define what calculus is. Well, calculus is simply a way to formally study change. So when we've gone, if you've gone through your studies throughout the years, throughout algebra, throughout geometry, throughout pre-calculus even, you've studied a lot, you've learned a lot along the way, and you've learned a lot mostly about fixed and static things. Think like we've evaluated a line and its slope, and maybe we've talked about curves and we've talked a little bit about their behaviors, but we haven't formally sat down and kind of rigorously defined a lot of attributes of these. So calculus is simply a way to study the way it, study these concepts, study how they're changing, study these values about them while they're changing. And the techniques in calculus are invaluable because they're everywhere. In every type of, of industry, building things, writing computer software, all this stuff, calculus is everywhere. Even when it's not, it is. And we'll talk more about what I mean by that further, further on. But fundamentally, again, calculus is the study of change. And when we look at how we've studied things before, we're going to talk about how we're going to make that jump into the next piece. So when we talked about the idea of slope in pre-calculus and, and below, the idea was simply to say, I've got a line, and I've got a point here, and I've got a point here. I find the change in y, I find the change in x, I can take delta x or delta y divided by delta x, and that's my slope. But calculus gives us something more interesting. Calculus says, well, what about a curve? Well, what does it even mean for a curve to have a slope? And when we study calculus, we can start to formally define something that, that shows us how the line is changing through that point. Remember that the slope is simply a rate of how quickly it changes. It's a ratio to how quickly the y value is changing to how quickly the x value is changing. And what we find is that calculus allows us to figure that out even on a curve, how quickly the y is changing to how quickly the x is changing. And further, when we talk about area, so in pre-calculus and geometry, what we had is we kind of had these fixed known geometric objects, right? We knew we know circles, and so therefore we know semicircles. We know rectangles. We know triangles. And so if we see some sort of object, we can usually cobble together the pieces that make them up, and, and then, or rather, usually slice and dice them into standard geometric shapes, and use those shapes and their known area formulas to to back out the area. But calculus is going to give us something deeper. It's going to give us the ability to define area not only for objects that look like this, but if I have some sort of arbitrary curve, what's the area that's bounded in this shaded region? And on the top there, I have some sort of sloped thing. That doesn't... Sure, I could maybe figure out a way to kind of get some circles and things in there, but calculus is going to give us an easy, elegant, very straightforward way to figure out how to get that area. Same thing with this idea of physics. When you did sort of physics and calculus, you might have started with some sort of constant acceleration, or if you said a car was traveling at 50 meters per second, notice it's a constant value. If it was traveling at 50 meters per second for 10 seconds, well, that means it went 500 meters. Calculus is going to give us the ability to say, if I travel at 50 plus t meters per second, and I have an acceleration of t squared, so the actual velocity is changing, how far will I have traveled in 10 seconds? Well then we can use the techniques in calculus to move this together. And why is that important? Well because in practical applications, acceleration is not a constant value. You're constantly moving at, at variable rates, and how can we possibly figure out how far something is moving, or how fast it's going, or how quickly do we expect it to change? if we can't talk meaningfully about that information. And finally, even our fundamental way of discussing functions changes. So when we discussed functions in pre-calculus and below, we talked about the value of, of functions. Now notice here I have a piecewise defined function where it goes up to this point and then has that jump. But what if I wanted to talk about 
what it looks like at that jump. How does that, you know, what's, what's that value here? How can I figure that out? Well, calculus is going to give us a way of describing what happens as we approach that value. No, we can't hit that value because the function isn't at, that, at the, the value C. The function is defined differently. But what about the value as you get really close? And instead of having to plug in numbers in a calculator just over and over and over and get really, really close, what we can do is we can use the techniques that calculus teaches us to zip right to that answer. And there's so many more things that calculus gives us, but fundamentally, calculus is a way of extending our knowledge, moving past what we've learned before, and thinking about the world and concepts in the world in a, in a brand new, deeper, richer way. And so I just I hope that you want to engage this concept as, as much as I want you to. But I just wanted to, mostly the idea of calculus is knowing that since change is everywhere, we want to talk about it, and that's what calculus gives us.